I suck at PvP. I don't follow the meta, I don't know any fancy move strats, but what I know is that at some point AI can beat humans in everything. I mean look, this is Deep Blue beating Kasparov in chess. This is Dandy losing to an AI in Dota. This shit is crazy. So I asked ChatGPT to make me a PvP build on rune level 60 that would dominate lands between without any effort. And I'm not sure it went as I planned. And yes, this video is inspired by Dumpy Kong, who was inspired by Kong here. Shout out guys. With that said, let me introduce you to Cat. Hi everyone, I'm Cat, short for copycat. Get it? Because like I copied the idea. Alright, Cat. I need a rune level 60 PvP build. It should be both a powerful and fun to play. Do you have one in mind? Sure. I can definitely give you a fun PvP build in Elden Ring that is both powerful and interesting to play. Here's one build that you might enjoy, the Dark Knight build. Sounds edgy, but okay. Keep going. This build is focused on wielding a massive greatsword and dealing heavy damage while using dark magic to control the battlefield. So you suggest me using a greatsword and magic in this build? Yes, that's correct. The Dark Knight build I suggested earlier is focused on using a greatsword and dark magic to deal heavy damage and control the battlefield. The greatsword is your primary weapon for dealing damage, while the dark magic spells allow you to hit multiple targets at once and control the battlefield. Okay, the Dark Knight it is. What starting class should I choose? Knight. Yeah, my bad. I believe she means Vagabond. What keepsake should I choose? Based on your preference, I would suggest choosing the Bewitching Branch as your keepsake. It provides a beguiling power that could help you in situations where you need to deceive or distract enemies. It can also give you an advantage in combat by causing enemies to attack each other or by making them more susceptible to your attacks. However, keep in mind that the effectiveness of the keepsake may vary depending on the situation and the enemies you are facing. Are you sure? That is the best choice for me. Can you look carefully and choose what fits best my Dark Knight build? My apologies. If you're looking for a keepsake that fits your Dark Knight build, I would recommend the Shabriri's Woe. This keepsake attracts enemy aggression, which can be useful for drawing enemies away from your allies and allowing you to focus on dealing damage. Wow. Is that an Elden Ring version of saying, I hope you die, dot, dot, dot. In Minecraft. It also has a unique and interesting lore that may appeal to fans of dark and mysterious themes. Sure, how could I forget about the lore? <sighs> Hope I won't regret it. So, after I created my little edgelord, I progressed through the game enough to get Torin, the ability to level up, and headed over to the Whipping Peninsula to pick up a Morning Star. I saw those challenge run guys do that all the time. Since it's the only bleed weapon I can use right now, getting my back by beating an old dying dragon in a fair fight to level up quickly. By the way, Cat, what should my stats look like? Your stats should be Vigor 15. Oh, God. 15. 15. Vigor 15. 15. 15. Faith 8. The math doesn't add up, but sure. Can I at least use the great sword for the, you know, the reference? Absolutely. If you want to make the reference in your PvP build in Elden Ring, using the great sword is a great choice. Neat. Let's get the greatsword. The greatsword you know, is a massive it's like weapon. turning on a radio while you're driving along on the highway somewhere far away. Only music in the background keeps you from falling asleep. But except it's fucking K-Lit. Okay. How's my trip? Actually, don't answer. What should I use for my second hand? You mentioned magic, if I remember correctly. Here are a few suggestions. Small shield. You could use a small shield such as... No, 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 thanks. Sounds good to me. Let's stop here till you say something odd. Rude. What about the spells? For spells, you can choose Great Deep Soul or Soul Greatsword to deal damage from a distance. Let's give her a chance, shall we? Cat, did you mean... Carrion Greatsword spell? 
Wink, wink. Apologies for the confusion earlier. That's what I thought. Yes, I meant the Farron Greatsword, which has the Farron Greatsword skill that creates a shockwave and slashes in front of the player. Repeat after me. Carrion Greatsword. Carrion Greatsword. Now, by saying Soul Greatsword, did you mean Carrion Greatsword spell? Wink, wink, wink. Apologies for the confusion earlier. Yes. I meant the Farron Greatsword, which has the... Okay, she greatsword. did mean that. Can I use Carrion Glintstone Staff for that? The Carrion Glintstone Staff is a great option for casting Soul Greatsword in Elden Ring. And to play it safe, here is the list of talismans in Elden Ring. They play the same role as rings in Dark Souls 3. You can wear four of them. Look through the list and choose four talismans that fit my Dark Knight PvP build with it. Great sword and soul great sword. Based on your PvP build with a great sword and soul great sword, here are my recommendations for the four talismans you should wear in Elden Ring. Crimson Amber Medallion, increasing your maximum HP, is always useful in PvP battles. Okay, can't argue with that. Cerulean Amber Medallion, this talisman increases your maximum FP, which will allow you to cast more spells during battles. Certainly considering I have only 10 points in mind. Stalwart Horn Charm, as a Dark Knight, you will be facing a lot of damage from enemies, so raising your robustness is important. I didn't even know there is such a stat. Graven Mass Talisman, this talisman greatly raises the potency of your sorceries, making your spells much more effective. I mean, you're not wrong. Mentioned every talisman that's in the game even. Good job. But maybe you have another option you know a more effective one based on your build here are some talismans that may be useful to consider sage ring oh no this talisman increases your choose from the list of talismans i've sent you your logic is great just use the list this looks like a list of items from a video game what is the name of the game and what is it about Elden Ring. Elden Ring is an upcoming action role. Okay, I got it. Stop. Crimson Amber Medallion it is. Okay. To get all the talismans, I had to progress through the game a lot. I even had a chance to beat myself from the future, but they couldn't kill me because of, you know, grandfather paradox. And it helped me to get enough runes to level up all the attributes Cat told me to. I still have 16 points to spend. Can I level up some figure and endurance? I'll tell you that. It's not that fun being one-shotted by Rodan. Skill issue. Aren't you an AI language model that doesn't have any emotions? Can you answer the question? Oh, and also a few points in strength to be able to wield the great soul with one hand. Yes, you can definitely invest your remaining 16 points into strength, vigor, endurance to improve your survivability and stamina in combat. Even though I was able to invest more points into figure, for the late game it was nothing. I was still cooked really hard. One mistake, you're done. Since I wanted my talismans to have maximum effect, you know, to somehow negate the damage done by wise decisions of my advisor, I had to do it. To get Cerulean Amber Medallion plus 2, I had to complete Rani's questline, which wasn't that bad. After that, I headed over to the Consecrated Snowfield to get this Stalwart Horn Charm plus 1. This talisman is such a joke, they didn't even care enough to add plus 2 version. And the Graven Mass Talisman. To obtain it, I need to solve the puzzle by making the gargoyles fight each other. And to make this happen, I need... Bewitching Grant, it can also give you an advantage in combat by causing enemies to attack each other. I told you this keepsake would help. Yeah, you were right, Cat. Who could have thought? To get the last talisman, the Crimson Amber Medallion, I had to kill the Fire Giant, commit a cardinal sin, spend some time with a great company, and lose my sanity to Malekith. It was so not worth it, but we're done here. I decided not to mess with Kat about the Velasco Wanderer's physique. I picked up Intelligence Not Crystal tier for Intelligence Boost and Crimson Bubble tier because, I mean, 23 figure is not a lot, okay? Let's be honest. 
What about the armor though? I want some fashion souls, some Elden Bling. Give me the drip. What should my Dark Knight look like? Thematically, a Dark Knight build in Elden Ring is typically associated with a sense of brooding, ominous power. Overall, a Dark Knight build in Elden Ring is all about power and menace, and a dark and brooding aesthetic that sets it apart from other character types. Say no more. I mean, what could you expect from something that doesn't even have any personal emotions, feelings or subjective experiences? The AI won't know it has to level up Vigor until it gets ganked 20 times in a row. But you know, sometimes fun PvP is not about killing the host. Maybe the real fun was the friends we made along the way. Am I right, Cat? Oh, fuck no. It's your fault you can't win. Get good, Castle. Okay. But jokes aside, this build is not great. Yeah, but it's not terrible either. It's a pretty okay build in 1v1 scenarios. It just needs some stats and talisman management, you know, to be able to survive in gank situations. If you want to change the building dragon, please let me know in the comments. So yeah, that's the end of the video. If you want to see some fun PvP, you should watch this video right here. If you enjoyed this type of scripted videos and want to see more, you should check my Dark Souls challenge run where I try to get all tail weapons with bow only. It's a great video, watch it. Have a great day and see ya!